Today, I wanted to talk to you about the rehab corridor rehab tool that's uh, in Civil 3D. And what better time of year to do it? It's at the end of April, and a lot of us are just finishing or getting through uh, our winter months, and we're either thinking about what we're going to do with our road rehabilitation projects, or maybe even some of us are in the thick of it, depending on where you are. Um, this this feature was actually released by Autodesk in the 2018 version of Civil 3D, but it seems that it, not a lot of people still know about it. So I want to make sure we get the word out how it works. And we know that in the past we did have uh, sub-assemblies that were used for road rehabilitation, um, but this new tool actually gives us a workflow process to, to go through. Um, so let's jump in and take a look at it. And the drawing that I have uh, right here available now, I have a, an existing surface that includes a road bed in it. Um, what I did is I came back and I put an alignment through the road bed and created some sample lines along that alignment. And two, I went ahead and created some some section views that we can use to take a look at what happens when we build this corridor and the data that comes along with it. So you might wonder, you know, that is that all that I need? Interesting, interesting enough, um, this process is going to build a uh, an assembly using built-in sub-assemblies inside of Civil 3D for us as we go through the, the workflow process and also build a corridor. So to get started, I'm going to come up to my corridor pull-down, and I'm going to choose, in this case, Rehab Corridor, which is where you'll find that. Looks very similar to um, building a corridor. There's a couple of differences there. Uh, I'll go ahead and give my corridor a name and assign it to an alignment. Because this is an existing site, I don't need to have a design profile in this case or in, in the case for this particular project. I don't need a, a design profile, so I'm just going to use the surface profile along that alignment. And here we get here's where it gets a little different. I can go ahead and set the region start and end stations for the corridor itself. So where along that alignment am I going to build this corridor? And go ahead and set my target surface. Then I'm going to click on OK. So what you see that what comes up now is, is something that's sort of new. Um, it's the rehab corridor environment. And we get some things that um, we've had before in some instances, but in, in a different way. So at the top, we have a ribbon. That ribbon looks very similar to our corridor section editor. In our workspace, we, by default, we get these three viewports. Uh, the one at the top would be my section view. Bottom left would, would be my profile. And on the bottom right, of course, is my plan view. We can configure this, by the way. This isn't the only way we can have this set up. Viewport configuration here allows me to go in and set up those viewports and define which each one of those are. So this first one is a section. Of course, I have my profile, and I have my plan. So these can be predefined and set up accordingly. Also, on the right-hand side, I have rehab parameters. This is another tool palette that will open up uh, in this environment. At the top, I can go ahead and set the number of lanes that I have both on the left and the right-hand side. Um, so in, in terms of thinking about my typical section and building my, um, my assembly for my sub-assemblies, this is where the data is going to come, home, come from for that. So these parameters you'll, that you'll see below here are very similar to what you would see in our sub-assembly parameters. We have, if we have a fixed lane width, we can go ahead and set that here. And if we have targets that would control our variable width, we can set those here as well. Down below, we have our rehab input parameters. First, we have our cross slope, cross slope correction. We can set our ideal cross slope. If we do have super elevation, we can turn that on. We have slope tolerance. So slope tolerance will adjust the slope. Uh, it'll try to make it an ideal at 
but if it deviates too much from the existing ground, it will hold it within 0.5% of the existing ground cross slope. The lane break slope limit is mostly used if you have uh, more than one lane. And the relative gradient limit that you see here, 0.5, it's just a way to the software it will flag me if I go beyond the limit that I set the value here in 0.5. Under vertical adjustment, I have some options. I can choose level only, mill only, or mill and level. I'll start with mill, mill only. We'll take a look at the others in a few minutes. I'll start with mill only, and I can go ahead and set my overlay depth. I'll set it at one inch. And I'll show you my minimum mill depth. I'll set that at one inch as well. So as you can see, my section area hasn't been populated yet. And I still don't have a corridor here. But by setting these parameters, when I click on apply, it's going to do two things. It's going to build my assembly. And it's also going to model my corridor. So I'll go ahead and click on apply. And you see at the top, my section view now has my tech, typical section in that, at that station. Um, my assembly is built in the profile, or I'm sorry, in the uh, plan view. And on the ribbon, uh, very similar to what we had for our section editor for corridors, we can move up station or back station, or we can pick a specific station in our list that we want to see the data for. Now I did set up those sections and I want to see what the uh, what this is going to look like in those sections. So I'm going to close out of this. I can always come back. So in my section, I'm going to go ahead and have it sample more sources. And I'm going to sample that corridor that I just created. And the results are very helpful here. When I zoom in a little closer, I can see that it did find where my minimum milling occurs. In this case, is at the crown. That's my one inch at the crown. Um, let me zoom in down here to the end a little bit so you can see what's going on with my existing ground line here. This, this line, this deviation line here that you see is uh, my new cross slope. The bottom shape below that line is my overlay. And the entire outer shape is my milling. OK. So when I'm ready to make some changes to this, the, the way that I would go to make those changes would be, one, to select first to select my corridor. So I'm just going to do that from right here. I'm just going to right click on my corridor and select it. And at, on my contextual ribbon, I now have this Edit Rehab Corridor button, which will take me back into that environment. The first thing it's going to ask me when I click on that, though, is to specify the region that I want to uh, work in. Obviously, if I had more than one region, I could do that. I only have one in this case, so I'm just going to pick a region. And it takes me right back to that environment. So I can make some changes right here in the uh, rehab parameters. I'm going to go in here and, and make a change to my slope tolerance to 0%, just to show you what some differences can happen here. Uh, overlay, I'm going to set that at 2 inches. And I'm going to apply that. So it, when I hit the Apply button, it goes ahead and rebuilds my corridor based on those parameter changes. You'll see also um, in my section now, I have some warning symbols. If I hover over it, this one tells me that my slope difference is greater than my slope tolerance because I changed my slope tolerance to zero. So it's now using a computed slope at this station. Some really helpful information here is back on our ribbon at the top, we have a rehab manager. 
the rehab manager, sorry, that went off on my screen, basically is a way to get to reports. So in the first report, I have cross, cross slope correction report, uh, which is which is viewed by station. And I have my existing ground computed slope, my ideal slope, my slope tolerance, the difference, the corrected slope, the relative gradient, and the accepted slope and relative gradients. Again, this can these are for both lanes at this point. I can turn those on and off if I want to see just one lane or if I want to see both. Anywhere you see the the red highlight, that is just a flag to let me know that there were changes made at these stations. So like at station 350, I see there was a 0.06% difference. So my computed slope is 1.94% at that station. I also have a milling and leveling report. And at the milling and leveling report, I can see by station, For my milling and level depth and offsets. And I can also see by per offset. So if you set your offset here by an incremental distance, it will offset by the center line on both sides. These reports are, um, you can take a report out of this in HTML format um, into a document. So let's take a look at what happens if I make some other changes here. Um, if I'm going to change my slope tolerance back to 0.5%. And I'm going to change my mill and level type to add a level course. And I'll go ahead and apply that. So let's go back and take a look at those sections. So in my section view now, you can see that I do have at the bottom is my my mill that shaded areas, my milling. I added a leveling course, and at the top is my overlay. So if I wanted to make a change on my leveling course, for example, here, um, I don't necessarily have to go back to the rehab corridor environment to do that. I can also make changes at the subassembly level. So let's take a look at the sub-assembly that was built for this, or the assembly that was built for this. Um, this is the one that the, the software built as we were going through those parameters. I'm going to go to the sub-assembly properties. And just like any other sub-assembly, the parameters are built into it. I can go ahead and make the change here as well. So here's my level of depth, both for my left and my right side. I can go ahead and make that change here, just as I would have if I had done it from the environment. The difference being when I click on OK this time, my corridor is going to go out of date. So I have to rebuild my corridor. And if I go back and take a look at those sections again, can see the reflected change in the section. So this was a this is an overview of the corridor functionality in Civil 3D that like I said was added in 2018. Um, there's more stuff of course that we could do if if you go beyond just the need of, of doing a single lane if you wanted to do a widening um, the simple process would be to add a lane to the to the uh, assembly um, and run through this process with the extra lane. Um, so I appreciate your time, and uh, Katana, I'm going to turn it back over to you. We do have a couple of questions. Okay. One of them is, the demo existing ground surface looks like it was modeled and not from survey. How well does this work from a surveyed ground surface where the thinning is a lot rougher? 
Um, it works very well. It, I've seen it used in both uh, cases with um, with the survey data, and it, it works just the same. It follows that that path for the existing ground, and and uh, I haven't seen really any issues with it at all. Okay. Next one: Will the corridor rehab handle a lane widening? Yes, it will. Um, one way to do that would be to add the lane to the subassembly or the the assembly after it's built it, you can go back and add the widening as you need to with just those typical uh, lane structures from that we have today in our sub assembly catalog. Okay, one more. How does the rehab corridor handle super elevation transitions? Is it using a super elevation table to determine the optimal, optimal super elevation or is it guessing from the super elevation it reads from the existing roadway? It uses the, the super elevation calculated values that we have in Civil 3D today, just the same way if you were modeling a, a corridor with, with super elevation. Wonderful. Any other questions? Well, this webinar is being recorded. Everyone that's on the call will get a link sent to them, um, and we will also post it on our YouTube page. It also has one more question. Is this only available on Civil 3D 2020 or other versions as well? Uh, Ashley was released first time in, in 2018.1, and it's in every release after that. So up to two, 2020, it's still there. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, we'll give you some time back to your day. And if you have any other questions, feel free to email us. Thank you. Oh, yes, yes.